So you guys do that record. It comes out in 94. Right. So what starts to happen next with, with Jay-Z and, and Rockefeller and so forth? Well, you know, still around that time, you know, we're trying to uh, progress musically. And, you know, we would try to get deals. We would take meetings and nobody wanted to nobody wanted to sign it. You know, we had a group called the Hard Pack and, you know, they didn't want to, you know, they didn't want no parts of it. You know, nobody could really see the vision. So we just, you know, we just kept just grinding. We just, we just stayed grinding. Okay. And originally, I mean, you guys had some singles that you put out independently, right? Or like, to- right? Yeah, he had a, he had a record called uh, "I Can't Get With That." Right. Um, I think that might have been one of the first releases, and then obviously "Dead Presidents," and you know, you know, pretty much everything after that. Mm. So "Dead Presidents" was essentially the first song uh, off of "Reasonable Doubt," right? That you guys put out, right? And Jay Z's on that by himself. Yeah, that and was had the uh, had the Nas sample on it. Right. Yeah. Um, I can't get with that when that came out. Did it really do anything? I think it created a local buzz. You know, just the fact that you had somebody doing something independently. You know, because you didn't really hear about people grinding independently back then. So just the fact that you know you got the the, the Lexuses and you got the jewels and you got all that. So, you know, like it was a pretty, it was a pretty, pretty big thing, you know, locally, you know, it didn't take off like, you know, we probably thought it would, but we just building, you know? Okay. But dead presidents actually made a mark. Yeah. Dead presidents was the start of it. It was actually the start of it. Yeah. Okay. Were you in the studio with him when you got, when he made that? Was I in the studio with him? Um, I may have been. I'm not sure. You know, I was there for most of it. Uh, I don't know exactly what records or whatever. Okay. So that record comes out, and that that creates a bigger buzz. Mm -hmm. And then with the rest of the Reasonable Doubt album, did you guys start working on that before the deal came together, or, or how did that come together from that point? I mean, Jay had a, he had a stockpile of music. So I'm pretty sure that the majority of that was already in the process, if it wasn't already completed. I know when he got with Primo, he did a couple of more joints or whatever. But for the most part, it was already pretty much together. Okay. And, you know, Jay-Z was the first one to really come out and say that he doesn't write down his raps. He kind of works it out in his head and then goes in the booth and does it. Was he doing that back then? Nah, well, I knew him when he was writing. You know, I was, and you, shit, he ain't had no choice not to write because you couldn't read the shit that he was writing anyway. Like, it was just, I, I would look at the pad, like, yo, how do you even read this shit, my nigga? Like, this is crazy. But uh, then he started you know, honing his craft, and then he stopped writing, and then, he, you know, just doing it just off the head, yeah. Okay. So you guys are working on Reasonable Doubt. hmm And you show up on uh, Bring It On. Right. Which was produced by DJ Premier. Right. And uh, it features Jazzo. Right, yep. I had heard... I mean, there's a rumor that Nas and AZ were supposed to have that track originally. I heard the same rumor. I didn't. I didn't hear it while we were doing it. I don't, you know. So I don't know. So, but I had heard the same thing. Okay. And during this time, you know, because because Jazzo was the one that kind of took Jay Z under his wing initially. Right. You know, he's the one that put him on, you know, the Hawaiian Sophie video, and then they did Originators together and so forth. Right. How involved is Jazzo in this whole process during Reasonable Doubt? Yeah, I don't I, I don't remember him, like, being around like that, like that. You know what I'm saying? I think Jay was kind of just doing his, doing his thing. I don't think 
Jazz's influence. I don't think he had a lot of influence on Reasonable Doubt, you know. Okay. But he did show up on the song with you. And Jim. Right, yeah, yeah. And then okay. he, he was also on um, Ain't No Nigga. He sung the chorus. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, that is Unreasonable Doubt. Okay, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, you know, from from what I understand, I, th I think, I'm trying to remember whether this was an interview I did with um, with Russell Simmons or myself or not, but I'd always heard that the Ain't No record, that was the one that really, you know, took Jay to the next level. Yeah. You know, yeah. Dead Presidents was cool and everything, but that was really more of like a mixtape record right you know like something's get you know a mix show type record the ain't no record that became an actual hit and it was on a major film soundtrack right nutty professor you know. when i put ain't no nigga on a nutty professor soundtrack everybody's like what because i was black i picked ain't no nigga and i put it on there jay-z first record i put that on the nutty professor soundtrack because i produced the movie right. but it was the record see records can go no matter what you think no that was the hit you know, Dead President was the, was the, uh, I'm, I'm here, fellas. Ain't No was the, Ain't No was the hit that took, that, that started the process of him becoming who he is. Okay. And how did uh, Foxy Brown get in, gonna get on that record? No, nah, see, I, I don't really know how that happened. You know, I wasn't, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't involved okay. in, in, in that. Okay. Um, so Reasonable Doubt comes out. Right. Did you know what you had on your hands when it was about to get released? I mean, nobody knew. Only thing we knew it was special, you know, because you could listen from from the beginning to the end, and you're just like, it's almost like watching a movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he's speaking the words, but it's almost like you're seeing everything that he's saying. So not, but we didn't know what it was, but we knew it was special. Well, it's not Jay Z's biggest selling album, but I would say most people consider it his best piece of work. I mean, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And you got a track on it. Yeah, bring it on. Okay. Yep. What changed after that album came out? Everything. Um, the attention, but more than anything was the expectations of the next one now. So that was, that was, that was the pressure, you know, and then you're going against, you know, this wave with, with this, with, with Puff and them, like, so now you gotta, you know, try to compete with that, you know, so there was some pressure. Right, but... But Biggie's camp and you guys were actually cool because Biggie actually shows up on Reasonable Doubt. Yeah, you're cool, but it's still competition. It's always competition, like regardless mm. of how cool you are. Like, even when we rhyming on the track together, you know, this is family, but I'm trying to tear family head off on this track. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's always competition. Okay. So, Reasonable Doubt comes out. You're on one track. Right. What is really your role in Rockefeller at this point? Because you're not actually signed to Rockefeller as an artist. Right. No, I, I, I didn't sign to Rockefeller. They, I was, you know, under management. And uh, I don't think at the time the money was there for me to do the deal there. So it made more sense to go do the deal someplace else, but just still keep it kind of like under the same umbrella. You know, just with the management okay. thing. So do you actually sign a deal um, with someone else at that point? Right, yeah. Like, after after uh, Reasonable Doubt and that success, then I, I went and signed uh, my first deal with MCA Records. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or it might have even been, with... I'm sorry, it might have been Geffen. Geffen okay. slash MCA or something like that. 